Okay, in this video what I'd like to show you is how I replaced the spigot on my stucco exterior wall in a way that it's a little bit more permanent. Now the first thing I'm going to do is chisel out the actual spigot itself. Now this is the only chisel I own and is not exactly made for this, but it worked out pretty well. Then I had to disconnect the pipe from the inside. You can see that the uh, joists here, the floor joists, aren't spread apart by, about, by 14 and a half inches, so it was a little tighter than I would prefer. And I had to put a little extra muscle in it to actually get this thing loosened up. But once I did, I could easily grab it and just untwist it by my hand. Now when doing this, I shut the ball valve off, but as I'll discuss a little bit later, the ball valve actually was letting water through, and you can see here that a little extra water came out. Then I removed the old spigot and the screw and the plastic pieces that hold it in place were all busted out, so I had to remove those. After that, I have a treated piece of lumber that I cut to five and a half by five and a half. This isn't kiln dried, but it had been a scrap piece of wood in my garage for a long time. So it was dried out. Making sure you get a dried piece of wood is very, very important, and you want to make sure that it's treated. After that, I got out my brand new oscillating tool by Dremel, uh, one I picked up for the, just this job in particular, and I went ahead and cut out the side, cut, scratched out the side of it, and then I had to chisel the stucco out a little bit at a time. I couldn't take full chunks out. I was trying to be as careful as I could with this because I wanted to avoid caulking because I just hate it so much, but I had to go chisel, use a Dremel, chisel, use a Dremel, back and forth until I was confident that the wood had a pretty good shot of actually making it in there. Now I did make some mistakes and that's why we have caulk to um, make sure that the whole point was just to make sure that no water got into. This was not an easy process. It actually took quite a lot of time. It took me about 20 minutes all in all to get, the, get it shaped to where the wood would go in there and I felt confident that it wouldn't fall out or that I wouldn't damage the wood while I was putting it in there. So I know sometimes when you're fast forwarding, it's hard to tell exactly how fast something takes, but all in all, after I had everything set up, running the cords and everything, it was about 20 minutes. And you can see here, I bring the wood back in, see what parts need to be uh, touched up a little bit. And then at that point, we were basically ready to go. The next thing I needed to do was to figure out exactly where the hole was in comparison to the wood that will go in there so I could make sure that I drilled the hole exactly where it needed to be. So once I had that measurement, I came through, went ahead and made sure that I measured out the bit that I drilled with so the pipe would go in. Then I wanted to prime this before I put it in just to make sure the wood had the best chance at uh, maintaining the whole time. So I went ahead, drilled a temporary screw in the back, not going all the way through. And then I just came in here with some exterior primer and made sure that I painted everything. Now eventually this will get touched up with some trim paint, not in this video, but I wanted to make sure that we protect it as much as possible. Then I brought in some help every time I get a chance to let my kids use a power tool, I always do. In this project, my son came in to help me uh, do some pilot holes before I put the wood permanently in there. So before I uh, put the wood in, I needed to do two things. First, I needed to clean it out and then caulk it. Now I wanted to put caulk on the front side and the back side. Again, all of this is just about making sure water doesn't get into any part of the house. Now, my least favorite thing to do in construction is easily caulking. It is a skill set that for no matter what I do, I just simply cannot master. So you can see here that I'm running it along the outside and on uh, the outside of the edge and along the backside just to make sure uh, to give it the best chance of keeping water out. Then, because the, I wanted it to be as tight as possible, I just simply tapped it in there, make sure it was in place. After that, I went ahead and put some screws in there through the pilot holes that I already drilled. Those pilot holes are important because you don't want to go through all this work and then have the wood crack. My daughter came in here and helped me with this uh, next part, putting one of the screws in. And as you can see, she does a pretty great job. Thank you. 
All right, then because again I hate caulking so much, I went ahead and put some painter's tape along the edge and gave it about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more than an eighth of an inch, and I uh, taped uh, painter tape around it so when I went to caulk, I would look as smooth as possible and it would be easier to paint later. So now the actual plumbing part started. This was soldered into a ball valve about five or six feet away from where the spigot and the copper pipe matched up. So the first thing I did was cut through the pipe and again, this floor joist was pretty tight, so it took me a little bit longer than it would have. I wish it would have. Then after that, I went ahead and cleaned the pipe out. There are plenty of videos online about how to prep a pipe and do all that. This right now, I'm just reaming out the inside of it, making sure that there's no burrs in there uh, when I go to make the connection. Then I sand out the outside. Now you'll see here in a little bit that I tried to solder this pipe together and that didn't work out, but these, this step still would be necessary even when I went away from attempting to solder the pipe. Um, then what I did, because the pipe on the spigot has a nail connector, I went ahead and wrapped it with Teflon tape, making sure I got going in the proper direction and I did three full turns around it. This can be a little tricky to get started, but once it grabs on, it's pretty straightforward. Then I carefully uh, fed this through. Uh, the part that's getting stuck here is actually where the wrench attaches to, so it wasn't affecting the Teflon on the threads. So I got that lined up and I made sure that it was marked. Um, so then after that, I wanted to tighten it down and that's why I cut the pipe before so I could come in and thread that in there once this was tightened in, I could be ready to connect the two pipes again. My first attempt was to solder it. Now, I've soldered before plenty of times, but it had been five or six years, and I was having a heck of a time getting the, uh, f getting the flux to suck the solder in, and it turns out the ball valve was actually leaking a little bit, and it caused this problem once I finally got it soldered together, and it went ahead and leaked everywhere. So, lesson learned. Don't try to solder when there is water running through the pipe. There are some videos that I'll link in the bottom that give you some suggestions on how to deal with this. So instead of soldering it because I didn't want to turn the ball valve off or shut water completely off to my house while I was doing this, I went ahead and used something called a shark bite. I picked this up at Home Depot and it worked out really well because you need to cut about two inches off the pipe to be able to install this. It's basically a quick disconnect. I'll throw a link to it in the description. Now, once I actually was ready to push this in, it took a little bit more muscle than I thought it would have. Now, maybe I hadn't, didn't clean the pipe off enough, but I think I did a pretty good job. But I muscled it on there eventually, and I'm pretty happy with the connection. I get a little nervous trying this type of technology when it comes to water in my house. But I talked to a couple of people and did a little research, and it seems like most people felt pretty comfortable as long, putting this in your house as long as it wasn't buried in a wall. All right. So you can see here, you can twist it a little bit because I needed to make sure that the spigot was still lined up outside. So um, once I had had that in there enough, I went ahead and had screwed the spigot back in there. Once I had the shark bite attached, the quick disc connect attached, I wanted to head and I wanted to secure it a little bit with this uh, mounting tape. I'm not 100% sure what it's called. I've been using it for a long time. I've had this reel for anytime I do any plumbing, I can just add this onto it and I just attach that into the joist to make sure that the pipe was level and to give it some, some support so uh, the weight wasn't sitting on any of the uh, solder joints down the line or too heavily on the spigot that was outside. So this just gives it a little bit of support inside, and so I felt a little more comfortable using that. I had to use a pretty small screw because uh, just the size of this, uh, the distance between these two floor joists, which I've known I brought up a couple of times. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten in those screws to make sure that spigot won't be moving. And I'm not gonna paint this in this video, but eventually this will get painted the same color as the trim. So if the spigot ever goes bad again, and I need to replace it, I know it's not buried in stucco, all right, and I would have to go through this. That's why I put the piece of wood there instead of just replacing the stucco and uh, just putting it back in stucco and covering it up with that. You can see here that it, uh, the spigot works and there are no more leaks. So I was pretty happy about that. All in all, it was a really fun project. 
but I did fail at one part and this was soldering the pipe. As I learned in this video, it is impossible to get a really good solder connection in copper pipe if there's water running through it. Now in my defense, I actually didn't know that water was running through the ball valve. I thought the water that had come out was just water that had been stuck in there uh, before. And so I kept getting a little drip here and a drip there, but I didn't think it was enough that would cause a soldering problem. So once I actually made the connection, as you can see here, I'm walking through the steps and got it connected. Uh, I knew I was, something was wrong because I was having a heck of a time making the connection there. And then when I turned it on and water sprayed me in the face, I knew I'd done something wrong. So I did some research on it and I'll actually link a, a video from somebody, another YouTuber, shows uh, why you cannot solder pipe when water is even a little bit of water is running through it. So there you go again. Well, anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much.